What's happening guys? So the reason you clicked on this video is because you wanted to find out some ways that you can make money online. But before we get into that, we need to address a huge problem. There is currently a disease that's spreading. No, I'm not talking about that disease. Symptoms of this disease include zero creativity, extreme laziness. Kevin David actually legit copied everything that I teach. And the willingness to outright plagiarize other creators that do work hard with no shame. He talks about this same exact stuff word for word that I have been talking about for the past year. And this disease is especially bad when it comes to giving people financial advice. I mean, you'll watch some video on how to make money. We are gonna talk about the top three paid surveys online. And I can tell you most of the advice out there is awful. So if you're actually foolish enough to try one of these methods. So we're in $17.11, divide that by eight hours of work and that comes out to $2.13 per hour. You're probably gonna be very disappointed. But don't worry because I got you covered, fam. Over the years, I've tried a lot of the make money online stuff out there and there are a few methods that do actually work. I started trying all sorts of different side hustles and small business ideas as a teenager and there were a few methods that actually worked even for somebody who didn't have any experience and was broke. It's so easy, to a caveman could do it. The best method that I found made me nearly $100 an hour. And everything that I mentioned on this list is gonna be either something that I've tried myself or close friends of mine have done. So it's not gonna be some copy of something that you've already seen 100 times. So first on this list is gonna be How to sell pictures of your feet. Just kidding, I don't think anybody would wanna buy something like that for me. But don't forget to smash the like button if you're into that sort of thing, or just smash it anyways because it helps the channel out a lot. Smash, smash, smash. Thank you. But yeah, I'm amazed that this video has over 2 million views in just a few months. That blows my mind. But anyways, the real number five on the list is going to be online tutoring. Now, I actually started doing this one while I was in college, and by the time I stopped doing it, I was making over $100 an hour. So the story goes, I was in college, uh, going through undergraduate, uh, trying to get into pharmacy school, and there's this test that you have to take in order to get into pharmacy school. It's an entrance exam called the PCAT. So I really wanted to do well on this test and I scoured the internet uh, forums. I basically bought like every book there is to try to do really well on it. And there were a ton of different resources out there. Some of them were pretty good. Some of them were really bad. And then there were a few that were really good. I also asked a bunch of people that did really well on the test and some people were just naturally really smart and they were gonna do well on the test anyway so it didn't really matter what they studied and then others were really good at researching what the best options were. And so it took me hundreds and hundreds of hours of studying and exploring and trying different things out for me to find what the absolute best option was and this one was so much better than anything else out on the market it wasn't even funny. And for the 0.01% of my audience that's actually studying pharmacy it's dr collins pcat prep seriously this guy dr collins must have an inside guy that writes the questions or something because the stuff he told us to study was exactly what was on the pcat it was it was crazy it was almost like he wrote the test himself so anyways, I'm not that smart. I'm not one of those students that just naturally does really well on their tests and it really doesn't matter what they study. So I was able to do pretty well on this test because of the fact that I was able to find that really good resource. And so a lot of my friends wanted to know how I did so well on the test and I shared my secrets with them. After a while, they started telling their friends about it and, and it sort of just like spread through all the people who were taking pharmacy in undergrad at the University of Kansas. And so I started charging like $50 an hour or so because so many different people wanted to know how I did so well on the test. Now keep in mind at this point, I had done zero marketing. It was all word of mouth and people were coming to me wanting to pay me just to tell them which resources to buy and basically how to go about studying for the test. So I started off by charging around $50 an hour and eventually it got up to the point where I was charging around $150 an hour. And this was a win-win for both parties involved because I was saving them hundreds of hours of time that they would have wasted studying and trying different resources that weren't nearly as good and I was probably saving them thousands of dollars. A lot of companies would offer options where you would fly to a study facility for like a week, pay them several thousand dollars, and they would supposedly tell you everything that's gonna be on the test. But this option that I offered was much easier. You didn't have to fly anywhere. You didn't have to pay thousands of dollars, and it was getting people much better results. 
And on top of that, I was reinforcing my prior knowledge, which ended up helping me a lot in the future. So I was basically getting paid to get better at what I was doing already in the first place. So obviously this is going to be different from person to person. Most people watching this probably didn't go to pharmacy school and so they can't tutor people on the PCAT, but a lot of people watching this, maybe you took a big test in high school like the ACT or the SAT and you did really well on that. Or maybe you're just really good at some random subject that a lot of people aren't that good at like math for instance. The general rule here is the more specific the better. So a specific thing that you're good at like a specific test or maybe a specific type of math that you can help people study for, that's probably going to be more profitable for you. For instance, I know medical doctors that charge thousands and thousands of dollars to tutor students on how to get into medical school. The big thing here is to just be creative and think outside the box and think about what you've already spent your time doing and how you could save people a lot of time if they were to just pay you some money in order for you to tell them what the best resources are or how to study for a test. Now there's a ton of different ways that you can advertise your tutoring services. Really good would be you know, Facebook Marketplace, uh, Craigslist, online forums are really good as well. You can also join different groups, like for instance, I joined the Undergrad Pharmacy Society at my school, the University of Kansas. A lot of the time there'll be Facebook groups that are completely dedicated to that subject as well. So you just wanna join those groups and just start offering really valuable insights and people will probably just start naturally reaching out to you. Um, if you wanna be a little more aggressive, maybe at the end of a post where you just offer some you know, valuable insights, you could say, I am offering one-on-one -on -one tutoring if you wanna reach out to me. You don't wanna to be too braggy or selly or anything like that or you might end up getting kicked out of the group. Now the one downside to this one is it does take up a lot of your time when you're meeting up with people one-on-one, -on -one, but later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how you can basically turn any of these methods a little bit more passive so you're not exchanging your time for money, you're more exchanging your resources or your knowledge for money and that way you don't actually have to be there as much to help them. Number four on the list is going to be flipping items or online arbitrage. Now I think a lot of people know about this one a little bit at least. You basically buy an item at a lower price and then you sell it at a higher price. And this can be an amazing side hustle if you have the cash to buy and sell stuff. So one really good tip here is always make sure that they come to you so you don't spend too much time on money or gas. So you always wanna make sure that they come to a place near you, so maybe meet at a gas station that's just around the block from you. And this is whether you're buying or selling. It doesn't really matter. Either way, you want them to come to you. The only time that you'd go somewhere is if it's like maybe a really big couch or something that you have to haul, or it's just an incredible deal that you can't pass up. So you wanna have an estimated price that you're willing to pay for the item, and then when you get there, you wanna negotiate a little bit and try to get the price down. So some items that I've personally had a lot of success with are gonna be phones, uh, game consoles, laptops, different like accessories like iPods for instance. Perfume and cologne is a really good one as well. And then video games as well. You can also do this on eBay as well. An item that I saw selling really well on eBay for instance was different buttons on a keyboard. So people would just go out and buy a bunch of different keyboards and then they'd sell the individual buttons on eBay for like $3 each. The trick here is to just be creative and try to think of different things that people are searching for and wanting to buy online. And you want to avoid items that are in a really competitive niche, like something that a big company would be selling, for instance, you want to totally avoid those sorts of items because there's just no way you can compete with a big company. People do this with cars all the time as well. They'll buy like a broken down car and then they'll sell each individual part on eBay or online for much more than what the whole car is worth. And if you're not self quarantining and you're willing to leave the house, you can also go out to garage sales or go thrifting. Anyways, you can find amazing items at garage sales for pennies on the dollar. Antiques and collectibles can be really great for making money. Furniture can be really great too if you have the room to store it because a lot of the times when students move out, they'll just leave their furniture on their lawn. There are a ton of options here and ever since I have got my first vehicle when I was about 16 years old, I started doing this and I've been making really good money doing it basically ever since then. 
And it's kind of hard to say how much you make per hour because it's kind of here and there, but I'd say you probably make well over $50 an hour if you just do it with just the items that are really good sellers. And a really good place to check what items are going for is eBay. You can go to eBay and then look at the completed listings tab, and then you'll get a really good idea of what items are actually buying and selling for on the open market. And then a slightly different approach is if you live in a college town, this is a huge opportunity because like I said, when students move out at the end of the semester, a lot of them will end up leaving tons of stuff just out on their lawn or right next to a dumpster. And I know it sounds gross like dumpster diving, but I once found a fully functional flat screen TV right outside of a frat house when some guy moved out, he just decided to throw his TV away and it worked perfectly fine. Some guy who probably looked like this and I looked up the price online and it was nearly $800 brand new. Thanks Chad. Now this one can be great as a full-time gig, but it's also just really good as a side hustle as well. Something that you can do once in a while. You kind of just wait for something to fall into your lap. Don't spend too much time on it. So number three on this list is going to be teaching English online. So two really great resources for this are gonna be Cambly as well as QKids. And these are ones where you can just basically get started with this. And I think this one is pretty self-explanatory, but you basically teach people that are not from the United States of America how to speak and write in English. With Cambly, you're making around $20 an hour when you first start off. With QKids, it's around $10 an hour. QKids is a little bit easier to sign up for than Cambly. And usually they just wanna chat a bit and you don't have to be like an expert in English. You don't have to have an English degree or anything like that. They basically just want to have a normal conversation with normal American or dialect, if that makes any sense, with somebody who is from the USA. Now you can start off on these websites just to get a little bit of experience. And then after you've done it for a little bit, you kind of know the ropes. You can go out on your own and charge a lot more. And I had a roommate who basically lost his job and he ended up working a side job on Cambly just to be able to pay the rent and get by. And he actually ended up loving it. He ended up moving to Asia later on and becoming a full-time English tutor. And he would basically just teach rich people's children the nuances of English and help them become more fluent in it so they'd have a better chance of getting into top American schools. And last I heard, he was making over six figures doing this, so it's definitely a viable option and he didn't have any formal training as a tutor or any language degree or anything like that. It was all self-taught. Number two on the list is going to be online freelancing. So this is another really great one. Uh, basically, you learn a valuable skill that people are willing to pay you money for it and you do it on the side at first, but eventually you can turn this into a full-time gig. So many entrepreneurs I know got started doing things like this and I've even known people who have switched careers just by starting it off as a side gig and then moving into a full-time thing. Now, there are a ton of sites out there where you can use to get started doing this. The most common ones out there are gonna be Fiverr and Upwork. Now, of course, there are some skills out there that pay a lot more than others. Bitcoin developers, for instance, which is super random, uh, are making $215 an hour on average, whereas logo designers are not gonna make nearly as much. Now, the trick to freelancing is to position yourself as an expert in something extremely niche and specific. You always want to position yourself as a specialist, not a generalist. And this is the biggest mistake I see people making, by far the most common mistake, is they will basically say, oh, I can do anything for you. You know, I'm a generalist. I can do anything you want in this uh, realm. Maybe like it's uh, making art, for instance. When you position yourself as a jack of all trades, you end up getting paid less. You can look at this with doctors or lawyers, basically any profession out there. If you are a specialist, you're gonna get paid more than if you are a generalist. Generalists get paid less, they have less fun, they're less respected, they get worked a lot more, and they probably won't even get as many jobs. What you wanna do is find a very specific skill that pays very well and has a lot of demand, learn how to do that skill, and then position yourself as a specialist and an expert with that specific skill. For example, if you're a photographer, consider becoming an expert on event photography specifically. If you're into online business, maybe you should consider becoming an expert on lead magnets specifically. Or maybe you got a business degree, you wanna kinda of switch careers, you can consider positioning yourself as an expert on pricing and strategy 
energy consulting. If you're in the computer science world, you're a programmer, consider becoming an expert on image object recognition. I think you get the point here. There are certain skills that are gonna pay you over $100 an hour, and then there are others that are completely saturated. You're not gonna make that much from them. And you want to position yourself as an expert and an authority on those specific skills that make quite a bit of money. Now, when you first start off, you're probably not gonna make nearly as much. You have to do an amazing job for all of your clients, and then you're gonna get your name out there, and there's gonna be a lot of uh, referrals and word of mouth and all that sort of thing. Now, number one on the list is very similar to freelancing, but in my opinion, it's even better, and that's consulting. Now, there are a lot of similarities here. Just like with freelancing, you're gonna wanna become an expert or a specialist on something that has a lot of demand and pays very well. Now, with freelancing, you would start off by doing most most, if not all of the work yourself. This is what's known as a done-for-you business model. And it's extremely time-consuming and also can make you very tired because it's probably very hard and repetitive work. And so for that reason, it's not quite as good as consulting in my opinion. Now with consulting, it's more known as a done-with-you business model. And the reason for that is because you would be telling clients how they can do something for themselves. And because of that, it's much more scalable than freelancing because you're not gonna be doing most of the work yourself. And with all of the different ones that I've listed, all five that are on this video, you want to try to move towards more of a done with you business model whenever possible. Now, there are several different ways of doing this. Some consult purely just over the phone or they consult over a Skype session and they're charging you know, over $500 an hour a lot of the time. And then others already have pre-prepared packages where they teach people exactly what they're looking for. And that way you don't have to spend hardly any time at all so they might make a manual or a video course or a program or something along those lines and then so the client would study it on their own and then any questions they're confused with or anything like that they would either email or call the consultant this takes up even less time and so it's even more scalable now a great place to start with this would be on a site like clarity.fm Nate O'Brien who's a really cool guy and a fellow youtuber here in the finance niche charges almost $17 a minute to consult with people on his clarity.fm. And that comes out to over $1,000 an hour. He consults with people on how to grow their YouTube channel in the finance niche. You see what I mean here? Very, very specific. If he was just consulting with people on how to grow their YouTube channel in general, there's no way he could charge $17 a minute. I've paid several consultants before and I've never had a bad experience. It's been worth every penny. I've also done consulting myself and I plan on doing it a lot more in the future. Now, all of the methods that I mentioned can be scaled by either hiring somebody else to do some of the work for you or by prepackaging things like I talked about before. You always wanna be focused on how you can move towards a done with you business model rather than a done for you business model. And I highly recommend once you get some experience to do this as much as possible because then you can buy yourself time and freedom. Make sure to watch my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below any ideas you have on the video or any other videos that I should do. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.